Hey everybody, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the haliform reaction between sodium hypochlorite and dimethyl ketone, also known as acetone, to produce trichloromethane, also known as acetone, or, uh, chloroform. Uh, the haliform reaction is kind of interesting because uh, what it does is it takes a methyl ketone, doesn't matter if it's, it could be methyl isobutyl ketone, it could be methyl ethyl ketone, or it could be dimethyl ketone, just like acetone, um, and it cleaves off the methyl group and adds three halogens to it while forming the corresponding carboxylic acid. Um, for instance, methyl ethyl ketone will cleave off a methyl group and will form propanoic acid in addition to chloroform with sodium hypochlorite. Um, acetone, since it's dimethyl ketone, I, I believe both methyl groups are cleaved off and it just forms water so you don't have the, the extra byproduct. But um, So this could be performed with a wide variety of ketones so long as there's a methyl group attached to it. Uh, anyway, here are the reactants. We have 6.15% uh, sodium hypochlorite solution, 400 milliliters of it in two beakers. And in the middle here we have just over 10 milliliters of acetone. Uh, and we're going to react it. This is a, a bath filled with some snow that I got outside. And we're going to start by getting a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. And we're going to put the sodium hypochlorite solution into it. Now this reaction is very exothermic, so uh, it's, a de it's definitely advisable to perform this in an ice bath, otherwise you'll have a runaway and a uh, sense of chloroform boils at, oh, 70 something Celsius, I forget the exact name, uh, temperature, but uh, you don't want that boiling out into the room, obviously. Final yield for this reaction should be somewhere around uh, uh, 10 milliliters, I believe, of uh, chloroform, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway this funnel out. This is not really stable, but... Okay, uh, we're going to have put the addition funnel in the middle. We're going to add the uh, acetone using the addition funnel. Um, we're going to monitor the temperature using this thermometer, and the other well will be closed up with a stopper. And I'll have to adjust the stand to hold everything up. Okay, actually, that actually works, as long as I don't get it above that joint. Yeah, I'm going to need some additional support for this. I need both hands to do that, so um, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so here's the setup. And uh, I've secured it with some string in my makeshift lab stand because I don't have any clamps at the moment. Um, I hope to be ordering those soon, but uh, of course money is always an issue. Uh, anyway, so we have the sodium hypochlorite solution in the 500 milliliter flask, 400 milliliters of it, and the acetone will be soon added to the addition funnel here. Make sure the stopcock is in fact off, because otherwise that would lead to quite a disaster. <laughs> so, here goes the acetone. There we go. Okay, so now we have the acetone in the addition funnel, right over the sodium hypochlorite solution. And we will now begin slowly adding the acetone in small increments while monitoring the temperature to make sure nothing gets out of hand. If it gets above 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to have to stop it and uh, continue at a later time once the ice bath has cooled the reaction vessel sufficiently. So hopefully to get a better idea of what's going on in here, you'll see it become cloudy as, because the chloroform is insoluble, which would form as a, bit, a little separate layer. Now I'm zooming a little on this and then turn the stopcock a touch. Alright, there we go, we've added some acetone to the mixture. And regrettably I can't stir it. Let's try a little more. There we go. And that was about a milliliter that I've added. And of course that will heat up and react and uh, once I've added all the acetone and the reaction is complete I'll come back with another video to show what has happened. Alright, while we're waiting I decided to teach a little bit about the haliform reaction uh, based on what I know anyway. Um, the haliform reaction works uh, by forming um, haliforms from ketones, so specifically methyl ketones. A ketone looks like this. It's got a double bonded oxygen to a carbon with two groups attached to it. Now a methyl ketone will have at least one methyl group on it. So a methyl group is CH3. 
So this is methyl something ketone, and we can just put like an R here, and an R stands for just any sort of chain of hydrocarbons. So if I had another methyl here, this would be dimethyl ketone, aka acetone. I could put another, I put a CH2, CH3 on here, which is a two carbon chain, and that would become methyl ethyl ketone, because right, two carbons would be an ethyl group, and this would be a methyl, so methyl ethyl ketone. Also, one, two, three, four, methyl ethyl propyl butanone. So that would be methyl ethyl ketone. Same thing. But anyway, in this case, we're using uh, we're using acetone, which is dimethyl ketone. So I'll just represent that here. So we have dimethyl ketone, and essentially, in basic conditions, this, this undergoes uh, keto enol tautomerization, which is a complicated process to explain. But essentially, the double bond shifts positions, and anyway, if there's a, hal a halogen present, um, it begins to halogenate one of the ends of these uh, methyl groups here. And so, what essentially happens uh, in basic conditions? with a halogen, and a halogen is usually represented as an X, so, and they're, they're always uh, diatomic, so uh, in basic conditions, yields the corresponding carboxylic acid, which looks like this, and then this would be R, corresponding to this R here, because you only need one methyl ketone to, be, uh, to perform the hal uh, haliform reaction, plus um, CHX3 where X is the halogen. So in this case, we're using chlorine provided by the sodium hypochlorite. And the sodium hypochlorite also acts to force the conditions to basic so that this works. Anyway, and so you get CHCl3, which is chloroform, and the corresponding carboxylic acid. In this case, because we use methyl methyl ketone, this stays a methyl group, so we have methyl ethyl, so ethanoic acid, also known as acetic acid. And if I were to use, um, say, methyl ethyl ketone, here we'd have methyl ethyl propanoic acid. So we'd end up with propanoic acid and chloroform. And of course, this works with other halogens as well, such uh, not iodoform, or, or such as iodine, um, but not chlorine, because iodine and bromine is what I meant to say. Works with chlorine, iodine, and bromine, but not um, fluorine, because uh, fluor, uh, fluorine or sodium hypofluorite, or the hypofluorite ion, is too unstable in water to uh, remain for any length of time to perform this reaction. So, um, fluoroform is. is made in a completely different way. However, iodoform, bromoform, and chloroform are all produced in this method, or can be produced in this method. And this was actually a very common industrial method for a long time. So anyway, yeah, it's a haliform reaction. So let's go check on the reaction now. As you can see by the absence of the green color, um, the reaction has gone to just about completion. There's a little bit of sand stuck to the bottom of this. But uh, you can clearly see the separating phase on the bottom of trichloromethane. And uh, essentially, after all this cloudiness, you can see it's starting to settle. Uh, once all the once most of the cloudiness settles, and uh, of course agglomerates at the bottom, I'll then uh, pour off most of the reaction mix and use my separatory funnel here to separate the uh, the liquid phase at the bottom. Uh, at which point, I'll store it in this nice amber bottle I've prepared here because uh, chloroform is photosensitive and will degrade uh, in the presence of light. So uh, it's always stored in dark glass bottles, opaque or uh, at least darkened. So that's the plan there, and I'll be back to do that uh, in a few minutes. Okay, the cloudiness has settled as b about as much as it's ever going to get. Um, so we're going to separate this phase out real quick by putting it in my separatory funnel over there. Well, it's an addition funnel, but we're going to use it like a separatory funnel. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, take my thermometer out, do the stopper, Put it on the middle one. I'm going to pour off as much as possible without uh, removing any of the layer that we want. Um, actually, I'm going to turn the sink on before I do that because I want to wash that down before it stinks up the place. Okay. So, carefully. But paying respect to the bottom layer. You can see how easy this is to do now with this new glassware. Okay. Let me get the sink off. I'm gonna wash all that down. Good enough. Turn my hand off. All right. So now, I'm off the camera. 
we now have two phases pretty clearly in the bottom here. In fact, you can see it a lot better if I tilt the camera up. There we go. Two distinct phases. And I'm going to get the bottom phase out and put it in my in my addition funnel right here. So, I'm just going to use a funnel to do that. Make sure the stop pack is closed. Prevent disaster. Alright. In it goes. And you can clearly see the two phases, bottom one being chloroform. And I'm going to rinse this flask out a little bit with some water, some cold water, not much, maybe a couple milliliters, just to get any remainder out. I think I mostly got it all. Cool. Alright, this flask goes for washing. So this funnel. All right. So now in my separatory funnel, I have the bottom phase of chloroform and the top phase of leftover reaction mixture, which is water and stuff. So into the amber bottle it goes. Um, once I get enough, in fact, I'm going to use this whole bottle of bleach right here, and I got a gallon of acetone behind it, and the theoretical yield for that is a. Uh, just over 110 milliliters of chloroform and I'm going to use, the reason I bought that is so I could make all that chloroform and that's about this bottle full so that's what I intend to do with it but um, this was just a demonstration and I'm, of course I'll be performing an apparatus that can um, make that on a much larger scale and then once I get that amount I will be distilling it to purify it but uh, for purposes of today um, we're just going to extract it or separate it right to this bottle so Here we go. Bottom phase is going into the bottle. Slowing it down. Just so not to. Oops. Nailed it. Cool. Make sure you get every last drop because this is precious stuff. Come on. All right. This can go into the sink now, do your wash. Alright. And this bottle gets its cap. Which is funny because I don't know where I put that. Oh, here it is. And there we go. And I have now in, this, in the bottom of this bottle real chloroform. Well, that was uh, the Haliform reaction. It's been another Doug's Live video. Uh, I really appreciate your patronage. Thanks for watching. And uh, subscribe, rate, comment. See you next video.